Hey, Bono community, Tony here. Tony's LPs are us. Haven't done a long video in a while. Done a few at my brother-in-law's last week. We saw the uh, dead, dead in company with my son. Got a dead shirt on right now. They were uh, fabulous. I was, uh, you know, I'm not a big deadhead, as you know, but I was very, very pleased with the show. Very happy I went. The energy was amazing. The light show, the technology, the sound, it's its outside this at City Field where the uh, baseball team, the Mets play, the new the new Shea Stadium, if I may. And uh, just hats off to Dead and Company. Rock on or keep on trucking. And uh, here we're drinking today my infamous iced coffee. I did a video on how to do this. It's on a short. It's very simple. It's basically coffee, ice, half and half. But the secret ingredient is sweet and low. I don't advocate sweet and low with for anything else. It's not really good for you. But for a nice coffee, it gives you, uh, it, it basically transcends coffee. It actually uh, develops into like a cocoa. It almost, it almost has like a chocolate milk taste to it. So try it. Secret ingredient, sweet and low, the pink sweet and low, the official sweet and low. So cheers. Uh, great show again by the dead. And today's topic, as you can see, is Annie Leibovitz, the iconic American portrait taker, photographer. Uh, she was born October 2nd, 1949. Her uh, father was a... Uh, a Vietnam soldier, Vietnam veteran. So she traveled. And I think from what I read, some of her first photos uh, she took as a young girl were in the Philippines. Then she got a job as a, on the staff of Rolling Stone magazine. And she later on became the uh, head photographer of Rolling Stone magazine. And she has numerous iconic uh, Rolling Stone covers from everyone from you know, Mick Jagger to Mandela. It's just, uh, and she actually was the tour photographer for a Stones tour, I believe, in the, in the mid 70s. And we, uh, we're we going to talk about, today we're going to talk about her album covers. And the reason I, I thought of this topic, I was playing this album the other day, which I recommend, The Velvet Underground, live at Kansas City. Max is Kansas City, New York. No longer there. The club was only there for a few years, but was a mainstay, mainstay for the punk scene uh, after the beatnik scene in New York City. Punk and uh, folk and, you know, Max is Kansas City. Velvet Underground played there. This is the last time that they actually played together. It was, it was taped on a on a uh, audio cassette player by uh, a Miss Polk and Miss Polk and we will talk about that but the reason I'm talking about this now is when I was reading up on on this record and listening to it since it was so primitive it's in mono and it was done on a cheap Sony cassette deck uh, Miss Miss Polk just decided to film to uh, tape it for herself became this album which is relatively sounds relatively good for for the source anyway in the background you could hear jim carroll talking jim carroll is was uh involved with that scene back in the uh late 60s he was friends with andy warhol as as was uh polk and uh, lou reed and the velvet underground so i said oh jim carroll i love the jim carroll band and I only have one album by the Jim Carroll band, and that's this classic, Jim Carroll, Catholic Boy. And I just did a short on people who died. It's a great rec It's a great tune. I love this album. This is actually a sawed-off copy. I also have a copy that's not sawed off. And this pedigree is amazing. It's mastered by Robert Ludwig, Master Disc. And the photographs are Andy, Andy Leibovitz. So I said, Andy Leibovitz, I mean, that's very interesting. I didn't really pick up on that before. And uh, here's the, uh, 
label. So anyway, I thought that would be interesting. How many albums did she do? I know she did. I think she did a John Lennon album, which we'll talk about later. But that's for the end of the show, end of the segment. So I started going through her discography, and it's over 150 records or something of that sort. So I'm going to go through some of the ones that I found in my collection, and then we'll talk about uh, her relationship with the Lennons, John and Yoko, and the album cover that I thought was Annie, uh, Annie but it wasn't. And she did photography for The Last Waltz uh, out of this the booklet that's in the last waltz there's numerous uh many photographers are credited uh, among with annie so can't tell which ones are annie but those look like annie's portraits and if you do you could pick this up and look through it and try to decide which one are annie's but the rest of the the rest of the groupings of the albums are basically her album covers this was a booklet. It was a uh, collaborative uh, event. Many, many photographers there. Uh, she used a Nikon. She used a Canon SD Mark II. And she used a Hasselblad. She used a few Hasselblads, uh, a 500CM and an H5D. If photographers out there know what those cameras are and what they're capable of, you could probably look at these album covers and tell right away which camera she used for the particular cover. So here I went and looked up. She did uh, Ronnie Wood's cover, Give Me Some Neck. But we know that Ronnie, this is a self-portrait. So I'm assuming that she may have put the collage together and did the, uh, the photograph of the collage. Or there's numerous photographs on the inner. So perhaps she did a few of those. But these these look like self-portraits so that's it's credited by annie credited to annie here we have one that's we know is annie right there that's her style it's almost it's simplistic in nature which is why it's so organic it, you know and everyone, everyone thinks i could take this photo but everyone can't take this photo um, annie is designated by the library of congress as a living legend her awards are too numerous to mention. She has, she has photographed everyone too numerous to mention, and she's still going strong. Vogue magazine, obviously, um, and many, many iconic photographs. And I'm going to talk about one of the most iconic photographs at the end of this segment. This is one I, I found interesting. Jerry Garcia and Merle Saunders live at the Keystone. So Annie took that portrait. And uh, this was cool because I just saw his old band, The Dead, doing a great job. Inside, there's some photographs. This, this may be Annie. I'm sure it is. You can see it's just a candid shot of the crew and the band and a nun, a nunnery from a nunnery. So cool Annie shot, Annie photo there. This is a great one, Rita Coolidge. You can see there's there's a, a, a bare background on a lot of these. It's just the portrait of the subject. And here's the inside portrait. Rita Coolidge. This is a this is a fun one. She had a long relationship with Jagger and the Stones. And she did this album, not my favorite Stones album, but she did the cover art for Rolling Stones' Dirty Work. And here's the inner for Dirty Work. And that's the, the as you can see, the background doesn't interfere with the subject. No confusion. It's the, it's the subject and either a blank background or a flat monotone black background. Same here, George Thorogood, Bad to the Bone. Great cover, did not know she did this cover. I had this album in my collection uh, since it came out. And there's the band, Double Trouble. 
or the destroyers, not double trouble, the destroyers. What am I thinking? Here's another one. Portrait, Boss Skaggs, a young Boss Skaggs. Very cool cover. Did not know she did this cover. Slow Dancer, great album. Photography by Annie Leibovitz, 1974. Here's a great one. She did a couple uh, Sydney Lopers. I just pulled this one, which is an iconic cover. Girls just want to have fun. And I think that says fun. I think that is fun. There's the back photo, but this is this is a little different because we have a background that's also interesting, and the subject in a almost in a uh, animated move. But that's the nature of this record. Here we have another portrait: Maria Maldar, great artist. And some photos in the back. Not certain if Annie took these, but she probably did. She was on set. And that's a great, this is still an original shrink. This album has to be from the 70s as well. And here we have this album. Flashback, Best of Jay Giles. And that's photography. And you can see the back. Background is just a white background. Typical Annie. This, these are great. We have a few Bruce Springsteen coming up. Cover me. With Bruce's, it looks like a 64, 62 Chevy, I guess. And this is the 12-inch radio dub. Cover Me, that's with the E Street Band. Great shot, iconic. And again, the artist and really nothing else in the background. Here you have a white, this is just a white uh, building, uh, facade of a building as you can see here. Here we have one that's a little different, but it's a classic. In the USA, uh, this is on billboards. This was all over the joint when this came out in the 80s. This is, I consider this a greatest hits album for Bruce. If you look at the lineup there, definitely greatest hits. And I believe it has the inner. And here's typical Annie right there. You can see that. And here's some more sparse backgrounds of portraits. Now, most photographers out there could probably tell us, if you do, you know, you'll have some fun with it. What camera did she use? Did she use a Canon? Did she use a, a, a Nikon? Uh, here's another one. Reminiscent of Cover Me. Great album. I love this album. Bruce, without 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 the entire E Street Band, this was mixed by Bob Clear, uh, Bob Clear Mountain, probably a Sterling or a Master Disc, and that's a great great shot portrait. And here we have he, she also did Springsteen's box set, and she's done numerous uh, forty five picture sleeves by for John and Yoko. She did uh, 58 tracks or 68 tracks, Bruce Springsteen uh, CD box set, which is upstairs somewhere. She did that cover, and Bruce is laying across a couch with his feet up, a young Bruce. And now I come coming uh, to what I thought, and you're going to have to look up the artist who did this portrait as homework and read, let me know in the comments. But I always thought for years and years that Annie Leibovitz did this cover, but apparently she didn't do the cover, but
But when she was shooting, sorry, I just got something message there. When she was shooting John and Yoko's cover for Rolling Stone, she was inspired by this cover. Annie was. And she said, I want to get something like this. I love the spirit of this. I love the intimacy of this. And this is this is almost an Andy type, Annie type cover. I have Andy Warhol on the brain from the Velvet Underground. So excuse me, but it's Annie. So she had to shoot and she's trying to get her her uh, her bearings with uh, John and Yoko for the Rolling Stone Rolling Stone uh, segment, Rolling Stone interview. And she said to John, uh, take your clothes off or start taking clothes off. And Yoko started taking clothes off. And she, she said, no, it's just John. And she said, and now you cut a little against her. And she had an, uh, a few pictures and I'm going to show you the picture from the internet, from the Rolling Stone cover, which is considered one of her famous covers. And that was inspired by Double Fantasy. So that's Annie's Rolling Stone cover. And when, when she was taking the photo, she told John said, are you going to get us the cover? You going to guess? She goes, I promise you I will get you the cover. And she did get the cover. But now here's the worst part of the story. This photo was shot on January 22, 1981. It was the last time John was professionally photographed because five hours later, he was shot and killed in front of Dakota. So think about that. I just got the chills. Think about that when you, when you look at this photo. And we're going to end it there. But check out these album jackets by Annie. Check out her discography and her portraits. It's all online. Numerous images from, like I said, Jagger to Mandela to Sting to uh, Talking Heads to Blondie. Uh, when you got your photo taken by Annie, you were you made it. That's that's that was big, and uh, still going strong. So she's an artist, and as the Library of Congress has designated a living legend. So I hope you enjoyed this little um, segment, putting my two cents in the album world. And uh, hats off to Annie. And keep rocking, or as I say now, keep trucking. And we'll talk to you soon. Uh, please leave a comment. Please subscribe if you haven't. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all those who watch and comment. Um, talking to some really, really cool people out there via the comments. So keep rocking and try the... Uh, Ice coffee. Talk to you later. Ciao.